Welcome back guys to NunoSolutions.com. I'm Nuno and in this video I'm going to show you guys how to generate XML data from querying a SQL database using the SQL the result set. I'm going to use the employees table that we've worked with in the past and as you can see we have five records and we have employee ID, employee name, employee phone, and employee email. So the first thing is if you want to just generate XML in general, you have to add this tag to the end of your query called for XML. That's the basics, right? For XML. And then you have to specify how there's like another keyword. So we're going to use, use auto. This is like an automatic formatted XML. We're going to run that. And what you can see, you can see the result sets are no longer tabular. It's now XML. If you click on it though, what you'll notice is that the XML elements actually come up as attributes, which is not really how we want it to look. We typically use elements. So let's tweak it a little bit to make it look a little better. So actually to make it use elements instead of attributes, which is its default, you can simply just put a comma here and type the word elements like this. I like that and run it. And now you'll see that it looks very much different. So like this is kind of like what you would actually expect. The only problem is looking at this XML, you can see right away that it's not well formed. I mean, it looks like it might be well formed, but there's no root element. So every XML document requires a, you know, one root element. So the next step is to show you guys how we can change the actual uh, element. Before we add the root element, I just want to show you guys how you could change the actual element name of each of these employee objects because it kind of doesn't make sense. It's called employees, but it's really just one employee. So let's close that. And the way you do that, you just alias your table like this as employee. And now if you run that, you will see that it makes a lot more sense. Now you have an employee with employee elements as you know, the properties of the employee. Now we really do need to add a root element. How do you actually add a root element? That's pretty simple as well. All you have to do is put a comma after elements, add in the root keyword, parenthesis, single tick, and we're just going to call this Nuno solutions. Close it off with the quotation and parenthesis. And it's as simple as that guys. Now, if you run this, you will have a Nuno Solutions as the root element, as you can see here. If I collapse it in a bunch of five employee elements within there and these, you know, sub elements, which are the properties of the, the employee. So this pretty much, if you're trying to do something basic, this is more than good enough to really export XML from your data. If you wanted to have like a little bit more control, I'm just going to comment this out. There is another way to do it. Instead of using for XML auto, we're going to use, let me just copy this actually. We're going to pretty much use the same query here. We're going to use a for XML explicit. Now what this does, it kind of lets you take full control, right? Of your XML. And so you'll notice if you run this, it won't work. That's because you can't, you can't just return all columns because each column has to be told what it should output as. And the other thing is there's a two, two like keywords in here. One is going to be tag and the other one's going to be parent. And you'll see what that is in a few. So first of all, let's return the employee ID. And now to control how it outputs to the XML, you're going to use an alias with a bracket. And we're going to call this my employee because we want this attribute to be part of the my employee. And we're going to say this is going to go in element one, right? And you got to use exclamation one exclamation. And then we're just going to give this column a name, and by the and then we're just going to copy this comma. I'm just going to paste it three times. And I'm going to put in here the name, emp name going to copy. I'm just going to overwrite this over here. So it's a little quicker. And I'm also going to do a uh, phone. All right, let's run that. See, see what that gives us. And if you go into the XML, kind of looks very much like the for XML auto with a custom element name, right? Uh, so how do we make these not be attributes, make them actually output as elements? Pretty simple. You go into the eat the alias of each. Let me just move this down so you can see it. All right, what you do, pretty simple, you just go into the alias of each column, exclamation, and just type the word element. And we're gonna do that for all three. We're gonna run it. And now you will see that now they have turned into elements. So if you wanna add a root, works the same way as previously. You're gonna to wanna to do a comma, root, parenthesis, single tick, and we're just gonna call this employees. And then if you run it, you now have an employees root element with multiple my employee elements underneath it. So that's another way to do it. Another way that I think is even better than this, this way is a little weird. I'm just going to actually comment this code out as well. I'm pressing control K, control C to do that, by the way, guys, in case you're wondering. So another way to do this is um, let me just copy this base query here. When you output XML, all of them are going to use this for XML after your query here. And we're going to select, let me just get rid of this alias. We don't need that for now. So we're doing, we're selecting all the columns from employees 
And the way you would do this is you use the for XML and you would actually type in the word path and kind of kind of a weird one, right? Let's just run it and see what happens when you do this. Now, if you run it and you go into the XML, it gives you elements by default, which is cool. But what's not cool is you get this weird row, like the root element of each employee is, is row, which is freaking weird, right? So let's close that. Let's take care of that. It's actually really simple. In the path, there's actually a parameter, parenthesis, single quote, and we're going to just put in here employee single quote we're going to run that and now you'll see that the row is now employee you know instead of row which is which looks a lot better you want to add a root element that works exactly the same way as before root parentheses single quote employees this is actually my preferred method and run this so now you have a root element of employees i'll collapse it so you can see it then you have employee elements in it so the cool thing about this is because it's really customizable. So like you want to manipulate like for let's say for example we want employee ID to actually be an attribute like this instead of actually having that as an element. But then you want all of these here to be still stay as elements. How do you do that? I'll show you. It's actually pretty easy. Let's go back into the code and we're gonna just change these into actual individual columns instead of pulling everything. We're just gonna do emp ID, emp name, and emp phone. Actually, and return yeah, emp email as well. I think yeah, there you go, emp email. So I'm actually also going to put these each of these in their own line so you can easily view it right now. Let's just first let's make this employee ID column a attribute. So you know, the way you do that, you put a space and you got to use double quotes here, guys, double quotes. And in the double quotes, you're going to do at emp ID. And what this at symbol means, it just basically represents an attribute. Like if I didn't do that and I just did it like this, then this this column would actually output as an element. Right. If I do it an at, it outputs as an attribute. So let's just run that. And you can see here you have employees. First employee has an attribute of emp ID, but then all the other columns are actually elements, right? So what if you wanted to move phone number and email to be nested under contact? So for example, let's say we wanted to do something like this, like contact, and then we wanted all the email phone numbers elements to be inside of a contact attribute. I mean, element like this and the space it out so you guys can see it. How would we do that? And let's say also, we also want it to get rid of the emp. It just, you just want it to say contact and you want each phone to just be phone and emp email to just be email like this. How do we adjust this to look like that? Very easy guys. So let's do that. So similar to how we did this attribute here, we're going to put a space next to each one, use double quotes. And then for emp name, I'm just going to make it full name. The emp phone column, I want it to output as in the contact node. Now I'm going to use a slash, which indicates that this value is really going to go in a different, like a sub element of contact. So we're just going to call it phone. So this really is kind of like the path to the contact phone. And we're going to do the same thing here, contact, email. And that's it, guys. If you run it, now you get a really nice XML uh, representation of your data the way you really want it to be output. So you can see emp name is now full name and the phone and email are in the contact element nested within it. That's it guys for this video. Thanks for watching. Guys, one last thing. Remember to hit the thumbs up button and also subscribe if you like this video. Thank you. Have a good day.